Thank you very much uh, for the invitation here to Bilbao. Um, this morning we heard a lot about uh, two very special, unique uh, artistic positions. And I would love to lead you now uh, to the outside, to the open uh, space, and also give you maybe an insight into some notions of today's sculpture, recent, a recent project, which I'd love to present to you by Clemens von Wiedemeyer. But first of all, I asked myself some questions because probably I also was invited here um, as somebody who's representing um, art, the relationship of art in public um, space, of, um, uh, of uh, public sculpture, if you will. So the uh, first part of my uh, presentation will be around that topic, and then the second will be more theoretical, and I hope to uh, gain your attention before lunch for that. And uh, the third part will be uh, about Clemens von Wedemeyer's Sun Cinema, which you already can see, uh, can see here um, on the screen. So why is art in public space important for a democratic society? Under the condition maybe of an expanded sculpture and several influences of other art fields and cultural fields into the um, matter of sculpture. Why is art in public space important? In the best case, it is the most direct possibility to me for everyone to see and explore high-level contemporary art. A democratic, a democracy, sorry, that guarantees the liberty of arts implies the importance of art or sculpture for a democratic society. Within the broad variety of perceptional offers, this also implies a sort of a mutual obligation, a value of art as such. <laughs> whether it is inside, in an institution, or in a studio, as we saw before, or, as I already said, outside. Does it also imply an obligation of the artist with respect to the society? Art in public, non-institutional space, is not only art in an architectural, physical space outside, but rather art in public, with audiences in multiple spaces and situations easily accessible and using all sort of available media. And this is also where the immaterial aspect of sculpture comes to it. How do you evaluate the possibilities and means of expression of temporary interventions as compared to permanent installations? Actually, I would prefer temporary interventions that have the potential of being permanent. You could say that, on principle, I prefer a concept of relative permanence. <coughs> After 10 years, the concepts of permanent installations should be re-evaluated, and all options, including a removal, should be checked wisely. The pure claim of permanence does not fit into a society that is constantly changing, though permanence might be today the right strategy. The expansion of the artistic space by urban art leads to the question how and why urban interventions can cause urban transformations, both logically and aesthetically. I'm skeptical as to the urban transformations. These are nothing but minor interventions often. Essential changes can only be realized by long-term projects and or are connected to architectural projects, to urban development and to landscape development. As I said before, a specific reaction or effect can never be predicted if we leave out utterly simple ideas. You would not start a marketing research in which way, what type of people would react before you begin a project uh, with art in public space or with art in general. Of course, you could predict that a bronze sculpture at a fountain would be touched by people. Unpredicti unpredictability, however, is a quality factor. This distinguishes artistically and socially relevant projects 
from art events. Artists and curators do have ideas about how people could react to the interventions, but they can never be sure. So what is the relevance for art in public space within the present discussion? I think different levels must be studied here as the present discussion does not exist. As to the discourse of art theory, I would assume that art in public space and sculpture in the public realm has been discussed in every direction and critically questions, questioned since the 1990s. In principle, all possible forms have been played through in all variants. The challenge that acting in public space once had is almost completely artistically explored and understood, especially if you also take into consideration the World Wide Web. This field, however, offers ever-changing options due to the constantly changing political, social, and architectural conditions in which it is embedded. What is interesting here is the rediscovery of the art institutions and the notion of autonomy in contemporary art. Since the 1990s, we have evolved from art in public space and have come to art about public space. Or also, if you um, want to replace art by sculpture, sculpture in public space, to sculpture about public space. For some time, art in public space could still thrive due to the rediscovery of social space. If you consider the art market, however, it is somewhat surprising that art in public space as being rather scenographic in nature and could actually gain a value as tradable object. The aspect of today here and tomorrow there is not really interesting. With the tradable object, I mean, for example, the uh, sections of uh, art in public space you could have seen in recent art fairs, as in the Art Basel, or also the Freeze Art Fair, which, um, which organizes uh, art in public space uh, projects. Interesting are those places where projects conquer a space of in-between, where they are present while having a certain latency. And I think Clemens von Wedemeyer's project is a very good example for that, but also Susan Phillips' project, which you uh, see later on. This latency often signified an immateriality, like in sound or electronic images, is more non-gestalt or non-form. It has not the pressure to appear in three-dimensional shape, but to form a time-based, multi-dimensional situation and sphere. As for example, Clemens von Wedemeyer's project, Sun Cinema, in Mardin, in Turkey. Clemens von Wedemeyer, for those who do not know him, is a German filmmaker, an artist whose approach is documentary and political, but who is always acting in a body-shaped, anthropological and analytical space. Let me introduce to you one of his most recent works, where I had the honor to be his nominator and accompanied him <coughs> in the development of the project. But let me first uh, introduce to you some ideas about the expanded cinema, which are related very much to the notion of expanded sculpture, maybe also some ideas on documentary and rea realism, maybe, one could say. Since film exists, the question about its room, or better to say, its space, exists as well. Much is told about space and film, several things about the places of cinema, theatres, and their stories. The history of these places is mostly characterized by the disappearance of cinema theatres from the European city centres. Big cinema complexes, most of them at city outskirts, with an annoying architecture and a functional interior design, have already replaced the cinema theatres in the city. First cinema theatres originally resembled the real theatres and the vaudevilles. A black box was designed so that despite the fact that masses would be there for cinema 
a ceremonial feeling would still arise when entering the cinema room or the lobby. As in the film itself, this ceremonial feeling was, in fact, an illusion. Always. The dim light, the velvet covers on the chairs, and the heavy curtains were there to make you believe that you were attending an esteemed, unique event. The cinema room connotes the performance, acting of the actors, that are only engendered out of light and celluloid, whose actions in the context of film subject have already been completed at the time of the projection. The story of the ethnographic and anthropological film, which is important here to develop the context of Clemens von Wiedemeyer's projects in general, but also the Sun Cinema project especially, is totally different. <coughs> Within the invention of 16 millimeter film in 1925, the material and the projectors became transportable. Research travelers and adventurers tried to film their subjects of study and their cultures, and this activity has to be seen as part of the material collection and source development. In some cases, these films have been presented to the civilizations that were researched in the naive belief that the confrontation with the modern, so-called Western life, of, cor uh, of course film was consi considered as its representative, would provide a sudden push of development as in the Western colonial belief, which would spare years of education. Yes, this medium was also believed to be useful for a sense of self-awareness. As if the visualization and the screening would simply lead to a sudden change in the development of a culture and bring all of its people to the same, let's call it Eurocentric level. It is hard to conceive how a person would react to his own immaterial image on film if he or she does not know, for example, what electricity is and has no idea that the time-based medium that is film pictures neither the present nor the future, but only the past. The anthropologist Margaret Mead and others stuck to the power of impact the pictures exerted and tried to develop a visual anthropology with the help of the film. These approaches were pivotal to the further development of the documentary film, which, as the study of civilization itself, had the basic problem of influencing the observed situation through the recording itself and the recorder and the, per the person who is recording. During the early 1960s, two different ways of action emerged for the documentary film. Both of them were representative of their background and behavior patterns of the cultures of their origins. The French cinema Verité handled how the film subject was influenced through filming offensively, in which the filmmaker placed himself directly in the middle of the happening making himself visible and almost offending the situation of the, um, of the film process. The American direct cinema sets a kind of an agreement between the filmmaker and the film subject in advance that the camera exists in this context, often cited as a fly on the wall. <laughs> in a way, imperceptibility present, present without interference and being unobtrusive. Requirement for this was a small team, guaranteeing a certain level of, of inconspicuousness and probably associated with the film subject. Today's miniaturization process of the technical picture media led to the consequence that today through video camera and digital technology, practically everybody can practice direct cinema without attracting attention. Through linking the camera and the screen in a small device 
like the modern mobile phone, for example, film process and projection is synchronized. The audience is the film subject. The filmmaker and the general audience all at the same time, respectively in the shortest time sequence and possibly within a very short period of time. A building will not be necessary for screening or watching a full-length documentary film. The worldwide network of ready-to-receive computers makes the container room, at least for these kinds of productions, irrelevant. The process of making, the stringing together of short scenes and sequences and the viewing reached a possible equality. As, an, as a media message is forwarded worldwide, several actors could participate in this film with a scarce time delay at their own scenes and generate an internet community audience. The selection process of the scenes, the cutting, which is usually in relation 1 to 100 <coughs> pertaining to the raw material amount, and the end product of the film will be pushed back in such a process in favor of an overpowering verism of the stringing together of the situations. The totality and dominance of the veristic picture sequence combined with the quickness of their broadcasting and the loss of the material, of the film material, leads to a redundant system of immaterial motion picture reproduction as we are constantly experiencing today. With it, the question about the meaning of cinemas and, and films and their gestalt faded into the background. The cinema seen as public space, understood as the built architectural structure, faded also into the background. This can be seen in its missing specifics. In case of the economical failure, the reutilization of the building as a shopping mall, for example, is already anticipated today. The cinema will be a place of consumption and commerce or a place for enthusiasts, nostalgia lovers and specialists. All of these express themselves in the aesthetic of the built and perceived container room. Despite its position as a private economic organization, it is not very different from the other, other civic places of meeting of an aesthetic nature, as it will be subject to the splits of profitability and the financial profit, like the museum, the train station, or also the church. From the once functional, synesthetic and three-dimensional room can emerge an object that can be defined as an artwork, as you may see in Clemens von Wiedemeyer's case, such as a sculpture from architecture. The pendulum can gravitate to object-like architecture, out of which sports stadiums in the form of nests or museums and train stations in the form of huge sculptures, where we are in here at the moment, grilled chicken places in the form of chicken arise. Conversely, places can arise which define the function of cinemas and the projection of films so, so that they can take another meaning and significance. From the beginning, the declination of the spatial possibilities of a cinema was not only defined by the motion of its pictures, but also by the mobility of its instruments and materials. The first film rooms were found in the back rooms and halls of pubs and restaurants. Since 1920s, the palaces of the stars in Hollywood existed opposite of the palaces of the moviegoers. To emphasize the structure of films and cinema in times of redundant picture series, sequels and film as mass spectacle seems today to be very interesting and significant again also for other art forms. The charm of another place and the disclosure of film in terms of words are in this context a potential field of reflection and discussion. With this, using of neo-minimalistic and neo-modern means, 
and principles is suggested. Open air public cinema places emerged with the open air and auto cinemas of the 20th century. The first of its kind is the Australian Sun Pictures Theatre in Broome that still exists today. In 1933, the first auto cinema Camden Drive In opened in New Jersey in the United States. A new utilization of the public realm, along with highways and especially the rising individual passenger transports, brought with it new structural shapes, hence new forms of film theaters, especially in Europe and in America. So now, now let us go. Let us look closer to the place where Clemens von Wedemeyer erected his Sun Cinema project, to Mardin. A trip to Mardin brings you near the Turkish-Syrian and Turkish-Iraqi border. Turkey is a country with a wide range of cultures. The city of Mardin has a history of thousands of years. It's dated back to, uh, that it is 7,000 years old. Mardin developed as a city on the Silk Road and the edge of Mesopotamian plains long before Berlin, Paris, or Washington, D.C. existed on the map. Today, it is a city at the corner of a stream of goods, information, and data characterized by the old building structures and is connected to the global information network with the modern university opened in 2007. As a military post, the city always had a substantial importance. The name itself, Martin, goes back to a term describing a fortress. The geopolitical and military importance of Martin is based both on the internal control of the minorities, the Kurds, for example, with a revolutionary context, and the foreign posts in Iraq and Syria. A clear example of the power of the remote region, if you want to call it like this, is the so-called Mardin Fatwa of the Muslim scholar Ibn Taymiyyah from the year 1302. The plea was linked to the continually controversial question about the relation of politics and religion. This, until today, well-known plea for resistance was directed towards the originally Muslim population of the city that was confronted with the Mongolian occupying troops which converted to Islam. In early 14th century, Ibn Taymiyyah defined the difference between the actual and apostate Muslims out of a local conflict. Only those who stuck to Islamic law, Sharia, were considered real Muslims. This differentiation still has a very decisive importance for the understanding of modern Islam. Supposedly, Al-Qaeda appeals to this fatwa to legitimize theorist, uh, terrorist activities. Only last year, an international symposium at the University of Mardin dealt with such a kind of a radical interpretation of this fatwa and opposed them firmly. Although Istanbul is getting more attractive for the Western Europeans as an economic and cultural metropolis lately, the development of the still distant, unknown, and elusive Mardin could be comparable in many respects. The above-mentioned examples show that looking from Western, from Western Europe to the unknown regions, Mardin as a symbolic place is important in understanding today's complex Turkey. a look to, uh, to Clemens von Wiedemeyer's uh, work. The Shadow Theatre. The American film theoretician Claire Johnson said about direct cinema, what the camera really captures is the natural world of a dominant ideology of the filmmaker. Questioning the ideologies and to break the so-called natural world of ideology critically and ironically through the artistic and film observation, description and visualization defines the approach of Clemens von Wedemeyer. His films contain documentary and pseudo-documentary stylistic devices 
that use theoretical structures and sometimes also the picture worlds which are developed since the 1960s always reflecting also the realm of the film presentation. Its space and it, its appearance, he defines a very unique notion of something which is called, since the, since the late 1960s, expanded cinema, and maybe also expanded sculpture, a term which later appeared, 10 years later, and was uh, mainly described by Rosalind Krauss, but I think we will hear more about it later when Gudrun Sundquist uh, speaks to us. In mind and by invitation of the My City Project, which was organized by the British Council when Istanbul uh, became cultural capital of Europe uh, last year, Clemens von Wedemeyer chose a special way to grapple with the city of Mardin as a public space is in th this case not through film, but through the equipment of a possible projection, which is ambiguous, and multifunctional, and, and which appears as sculpture and architecture at the end. The link for Clemens von Wedemeyer was that Martin, and also for me proposing him for that place, was that Martin has a certain tradition as a, a, a place for a cinema festival, um, and uh, that uh, to us seemed to be very interesting for him to be implemented in that uh, society there. <coughs> Wedemeyer created for the sunny and bleak hillside at the edge of the city a scene which is a film set, a cult place, a public sculpture and an open-air cinema all at the same time. One is inclined to remember some sets maybe from films like L'Homme de Rio, which is filmed in Brazil, or Le Mépris with Villa Malaparte as its set. A modern architecture with a Corbusier-like clarity represents as well the archaic as the 20th and 21st century, the sun cult, the star cult, and the non-linear history of culture. A glance at the landscape, the reflections and shadows of the sun, at the mirrored back, the projection surface during the day, and the exposure through the projector after sunset create a place which is both anchored in history and also pointing out to the future. The Project Sun Cinema carries the soul of the place further and surely not through a glimpse of the situation at a certain time, but through the creation of a situation that can be seen and experienced differently again and again in time and on site. It's not transportable. In times of WikiLeaks, the fly on the wall handed over its impetus of clearing up. At a place like Mardin, which belongs to the heart, the center of the history of humanity. The idea of the artist and his analysis of the place rather led to the relation of historia and storia history and story, which are suddenly the only characteristic things and they have to be told. Art, respective sculpture, rises to the position of a dispositive, which involves the told and the untold, the ideological opposite of the world and the humanity. In itself, the approach within is anti-ideological, as it does not claim and demand universality, but leverages visibility with a single look, which finds its expression on the basis of collective anthropological development of pictures and approaches. The project itself defines not only a situation, but also a social space, of course. This relation of a time-based medium as film and a neo-modernist sculpture creating a social and aesthetic complex situation is for me very significant for the most actual artist positions in the field that you might call sculpture. Thank you very much. <laughs>